In the RIPCOR 2 study, we wanted to answer a question that fills a knowledge gap in clinical practice, and that is whether routine assessment of FFR in all the epicardial vessels at the stage of a diagnostic angiogram would have the kind of effect that we've seen before in patients who have already been allocated to PCI in studies such as FAME, DEFER, and FAME2. We took 1,100 patients who were undergoing a diagnostic angiogram for either stable angina or non-SC elevation MI. And we randomized them to either just assessment and management by angiography alone, or by FFR of all the epicardial vessels. The median number of vessels that were studied in the FFR group was four. So the investigators stuck very well to the protocol. In just under 15% of the angiogram alone group, their cardiologists felt that they needed another test before they could make a final management plan. And that compared to less than 2% of the people in the FFR group. In terms of total hospital costs at one year, which was the co-primary endpoint for which the study was powered, there was no significant difference between the groups, despite that difference in non-invasive tests. Nor was there any difference in the other co-primary endpoint of the year, which was quality of life and angina status. Finally, we looked at clinical events, of course, as pre-specified secondary endpoint, and looking at the rate of a combined MACE endpoint of death, MI, unplanned revascularization, and stroke, there was again no significant difference between the groups at a year. So what we found in this study is that despite the plausibility of the theoretical benefit of knowing pressure wire data in all the epicardial vessels at the stage of the diagnostic angiogram, there is no advantage in terms of either cost, quality of life, or clinical events. And this is a surprising result, but a very important one, because it indicates there's no role in routine clinical practice for this systematic use of the pressure wire.